Welcome everyone. I'm Laura DeFranco, the CEO of Brave Healer Productions, where we have a mission to wake the world up to what's possible. And here today to help me with that mission are some of the most amazing author experts of a new book that we have coming out. It's called The Energy Medicine Solution, Mind-Blowing Results for Living an Extraordinary Life. I love saying that title, you guys. So before I introduce you to these amazing women that I have here with me today, let me just say a big thank you to Jacqueline Kane. Jacqueline, we wouldn't be here without you. Jacqueline is our lead author of The Energy Medicine Solution. And she had a really big mission to get together a group of stellar author experts to help you understand just what's possible with energy. I can't wait to get into these discussions today. So with me is Erica Dworkin, an award-winning board-certified holistic nutritionist and wellness guide and the founder of, Vi okay, say it for me, Erica. Vitathena Wellness. Thank you. A store without walls. I didn't want to mess it up. Um, awesome. <laughs> Pat McGrath is here. She uses feng shui, spiritual counseling, and decluttering to transform lives. And Sunshine Lane is a medium, energy healer, teacher, and a holistic spiritual soul life coach that works with pure love and acceptance. Oh my gosh, ladies. Okay. Erica, you're going to start this party off. Tell us about your amazing chapter. So my chapter is chapter three, Midlife and Menopause, Mapping Your Path to Empowerment. So Laura, I have a calling to support midlife and menopausal women's self-empowered journeys to vibrancy, self-confidence, and wholeness. So looking back, I now realize that I had to walk alone through the fire of my own midlife and menopause journey to rise from the ashes stronger, more awake, and better equipped to guide others as they transition to what I like to call the age of wisdom. My own, um, during my own self-guided healing quest, I created the five essential steps to mapping your midlife and menopause at path to empowerment. And step one, is a midlife and menopause belief survey. And it's actually in my chapter and it's a great starting point to mapping your own midlife journey. It enables you to uncover your midlife and menopause beliefs so you can begin to learn how to manage your consciousness and move gracefully toward the empowered future that you envision for yourself. Equally as important as your emotional health is your physical well being. Essential mapping steps two through five address many other wellness and nutrition secrets, my nutrition secrets for bringing out your menopause goddess within, and those are available through my website. I'm passionate about women knowing I'm here for them and that they do not need to walk alone through this part of their life. And I, um, one thing that I wanted to mention about um, my own path is that I experienced so many physical issues. I had to cope with hot flashes, overweight, brain fog. Over, I was overwhelmed with new self-doubt that I had never experienced before that showed up as paralysis. I was completely devoid of balance and guidance. And women do not need to go through what I went through. Yeah, thank you, Erica. I'm going to move back to um, the one of the first steps you talked about that I think is absolutely foundational. Um, I love how you have us do a menopause belief survey, because when you look at that, when you really understand what you believe, everything goes from there, right? What else do you want to say about that? Well, so the belief survey enables women to determine whether they have they are swayed more by impeding beliefs or supportive beliefs and as you said the the our beliefs determine our destiny our destiny so it's really critical to get a handle on that and my first step actually is the steps don't move necessarily in consecutive order 
they overlap and step one filters into all of the other steps. It's, a, it's important all along the way to be aware of what your beliefs are because they will manifest your reality. Yes. That's, oh my goodness. It's such an important part of the conversation we're going to have today about energy, you guys. So that was a great way to kick this off. Erica, thank you so much for being here today. Um, Pat, let's hear about your amazing chapter. Well, um, I got into feng shui because of the place that I moved into, which you can see behind me, um, some of the, the concerns that I had. And it was overwhelming to me. And I read about a woman who was talking about the energy of our space back in the, um, I'd say it was around the mid 90s. And I had never heard that before, but there was something inside of me that understood it immediately. And so I called her, she came here, she talked about my space, I got it right away. And she said, you're getting this, um, why don't you come to the new school that we're starting? And the first weekend was about clutter. I immediately understood that because a little bit of history here, my grandfather was the um, head of the lost and found for the New York City subway system. Oh. So you can imagine the stuff. And I did see his office once when I was five. And, but he, interestingly enough, he and my grandmother, their house was neat as a pin, very orderly. Their daughter, my mother, could never throw anything out. So I was constantly going around thinking, well, what's going on here? And that childhood, I think, really helped me understand that the environment really affects where we are, where we live, where we work. I didn't have the vocabulary for it. When I tell people about, you know, take a class here, take a class there, I said, you're going to get vocabulary for what you already know. And so this woman, Karen Kingston, was giving me the vocabulary for something I already knew, but it was also giving me permission to let go of a lot of stuff. So what I have found out, certainly at my age, because I clearly I'm the oldest one here, I've been through a lot of experiences that come with their stuff. And in my own personal life, it was identifying what those what stuff was actually holding me back in the past, in the past, and what stuff, if I let it go, gave me a sense of freedom. And that was everything to me. And so when I married that idea with the principles of feng shui, it became very powerful. And then using spiritual counseling on top of it. Um, and so I'll give you an example. One of my first clients was a woman who was very, very um, depressed and filled with anxiety. And you, when you walked into her house, the, the pictures on the wall were of children that were three or four years old. Well, it turns out her kids were in middle school. They were all boys and they were all out of control. And she was feeling like a terrible mother. So as we go around the house, what we come back to is the front door. And in, front, in feng shui, front doors are very, very important. There was a chair that was there. So the conversation goes into, well, tell me about the chair. And she tells us that the chair comes from a relative who was extremely critical that no nobody in the family could be as good a mother as she was. <laughs> so of course, that's an energy thing. So now evolving all these years, what I do is I write down lists of what, you know, when I ask about a piece and I get a sense that it's not supporting this person because the idea is to create environments that are supportive of people and who they are and what they do. And I write down a list of the words that they use. And then I read the list back to them and say, words have energy. This is the energy in your space. It's your free will to pursue the recommendations that I'm going to give you. But um, so many people are going, you know, <laughs> why didn't I see that? <laughs> Did they burn the chair? I got to know. <laughs> it went out. <laughs> but but what it brings up, for instance, is not only the energy in her home, but now she has to face a relative that is not easy to face. And she has to stand in her own two feet and say, you know, I have a phrase I call, well, I have two phrases. I, I call one, it's not about, feng shui is not about moving your couch. It's about moving your soul. And the other phrase is claim your space, claim your life. So if you claim your space, there shouldn't be anything in your space that is not supporting you because in feng shui we consider our space an extension of us and we our lives are sacred so therefore our space is sacred so um 
that's the alignment that I'm looking for. So anyway, I, I try to have people make, have fun with it because lots of times you can pick up a feng shui book and it's not really a lot of fun. There's a lot of fear in those books and they, and, and to, to defend them, it's very difficult to, because the stuff is so powerful one-on-one, -on -one, you know, with an individual. So it's very hard to talk about generalities. So, um, the books are stuck to talking about generalities. And then people say, well, I, I tried this and it didn't work. Well, because there is no one size fits all, but it's endlessly fascinating to me. <laughs> it's definitely endlessly fascinating. It's one of my favorite topics. Um, <laughs> really, really awesome topic. We've got, I've got a question later. I'll ask everybody about spaces, but um, how cool to have Pat here to talk about feng shui. My saying is I write to feng shui my soul. <laughs> and so as a writer, you know, I, I have practices about that. Pat, thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Sunshine, how about you? Tell us about your amazing chapter. Hello, I'm very grateful to be here with you guys today. So thank you. My chapter is chapter 24, and it's called The Divine Bubble of Protection and Gratitude and Grieving. And I share a story that just recently happened to my family and I and that we had to, you know, accept and allow and transition through and like move forward um, from that. And it also talks about how, you know, us being a divine, unique soul here in this physical realm on Mother Earth, um, that we are taught and conditioned only to think of that physical body, maybe the emotional, maybe the mental and um, but we have all our different bodies, right? The physical, the emotional, the mental, the spiritual, and our ether body. And they're all connected to here on the physical realm, but also up in the divine. And um, <clears throat> it's all energy. All our bodies and systems are energy. Scientifically, you know, when we look at the physical body, but it's still energy. And we're to constantly change, grow, and expand to evolve our soul. And um, you can get just stuck on that physical body or maybe the emotional or maybe the mental. And when you hear a balancing and harmonizing, it's all those different bodies. And we're just taught to focus on that physical because it's that physical body and system because we can see it. We can feel it, right? But we are all, all divinely protected at all times, right? It might feel invisible, but it's always there waiting to support and to tap into. Um, so we talk about that in the chapter. And also, you know, we might have experiences that feel chaotic, challenging, traumatizing. And um, we do sometimes live out of fear when something happens to us. But fear is there just to, you know, kind of it's a survival thing but it's so distorted in society. It's a foundation for a lot of people. And it's getting back into, you know, <clears throat> there's that fear and that survival that people might have on a daily basis. But as we raise our consciousness and our perceptions, and we tap into all our different bodies and systems and our divine information, we can create, we can thrive, we can feel, fulfilled right we can change those traumatic um and chaos and complicated experiences that we have into a deeper knowledge a deeper understanding a peace a joy and we all are healers right we all come from the same place and um we're all energy and as we experience things we can illuminate each other and help heal each other right we're all here i'm a medium we are all here to love and heal our and evolve our soul. It's that simple, but it's that human experience, mind, and that conditioning that closes down our gifts to have that perce um, perception and higher consciousness, right, about different lifetimes. So in the chapter two, we talk about <clears throat> there's different stages of a transition. When we experience something, we... Um, have different stages that we can go through. And sometimes we sit in certain stages and don't move out from that. Say, let's back it up a little bit to like just a feeling, right? 
um, a lot of times if we felt something, we'll hang on to that. And that becomes a dominant feeling and that's what we live in, right? And it's not to, we're energy. So we're to experience something, right? Feel it, accept it, allow, allow it, acknowledge it and move it out, let it go, right? That's where the dis-ease and disease can happen in our bodies is because we hang on to it and it turns into a physical thing because we don't have that simple flow of energy anymore. We're, we're clogging it up. Yes. Um, and what a, an amazing way to start to think about energy, you guys. Um, you're going to be getting a mini education here today, especially if you haven't heard some of the ways that um, our authors are speaking about energy right now. Maybe you don't even understand that there's more than one body, um, as Sunshine was describing. Um, Sunshine, thank you so much for being here. We're going to hear more now about this. And of course, you all, Sunshine said it, you all know this, everything is energy, everything. And I'm so excited to talk about this powerful topic. So Pat, I'm going to start with you. What's one important thing that you want our listeners to understand about energy and what it can do for their life? So I think the big issue that I found um, learning feng shui, obviously, it's Chinese. And the Eastern culture has a word for energy, qi. And it relates to everything. And they have tons and tons of way of describing energy. When I first started to go in into homes, I realized that they didn't understand that something like a table has energy. So our culture doesn't have the vocabulary to communicate. That was the most difficult thing. So I've had to learn language um, uh, to help people understand what I'm talking about. I think that's the biggest issue. Um, in our culture, it's either we, people say, I, I don't have any energy. Yeah, you do. The energy is just depressed right now. That's energy also. Um, or you can tell when someone's, you know, um, hyper. You think, oh, they have a lot of energy. No, they have hyper energy. So that's, you know, my first step in all of um, the um workshops or classes or individual visits is to raise awareness to what energy is about and get to their feelings. So many people in our culture, I don't know if this is true around the world, but in our culture, they're all in their heads. And so they don't feel and they don't feel, oh, that doesn't bother me. Yeah, it is bothering you. I just had a woman the other day, we moved a piece of furniture that she had moved back in the back of the room we brought it out and moved it to a different part of the room to improve the flow of the room. Well, turns out that piece of furniture had a tremendous amount of negative attachments to it that she didn't know about because she was hiding it. And then it brought up just by moving that energy. So um, it, moved up, it brought up a lot of issues for her that she knew that she thought she was done with, but she wasn't really done with. Um, so, but the idea that energy you know, and, and in our culture, we everybody refers to Einstein saying energy is everything and it cannot be destroyed, only transformed. This is what the work is. And I think the other issue with this is that people traditionally don't understand the word healing either, because I just came through cancer, chemo and radiation myself. So when they told me what they were going to do, I said to them, well, okay, you know, I'm going to do what you tell me to do, but I'm also going to pursue energy and healing. And they just rolled their eyes with me because all they know is Reiki and yoga. So I thought, okay, well, it's going to take a while to um, evolve here. But um, the idea being that healing gets you back to your sense of well-being so that you can heal yourself. That's all it is. But there are a zillion modalities out there to help people do that. So using our space is one of those things to have something in your, your environment that you see every single day because we have a response, we have a relationship with everything we see every day that you have good memories of being unconditionally loved or being supported or something that lifts your spirit rather than, oh, I have to keep this from a relative I hate. And every time I walk by it, my body drags and I don't even know that it's dragging, you know. So I think it's the vocabulary that's a big deal. And I think we're evolving and 
hopefully in a few years, the medical community and the healing community can do more of this rather than not trust each other. Um, and uh, I was in a bookstore recently looking for a, uh, a particular book about uh, clutter and the spirit. And the guy yelled at me, he goes, what do you need a book about clutter for? Just clean up your space. <laughs> so, you know, nice. so I, it is what it is, you know. I love it. Um, thank you for kicking off that question. So awesomely, Sunshine, um, what would your thing be? What's that one important thing you want our listeners to understand about energy and really what it can do for their life to understand it? Oh, energy, like everything is energy. And as we know, energy cannot um, remain the same. Energy is constantly in flow and moving. So if our bodies and systems, right, are energy, which means we have to constantly flow, right, grow, expand, and be in mo like movement, be in like action, um, and continue forward. And that is what our soul is here to do, right? We're all unique divine souls with many, many, many gifts, and um, we have the ability to. Can, if we're in the flow of all moments, right, and moving through, then we can continue to do exactly what we're going to do in this lifetime, fulfilled, right, with joy. Joy is the key to health, right? It's the key to health. It's the key to everything, happiness, right? There, every feeling is a vibration, which is energy, which is a frequency. So to be a uh, human here down in the physical and um, we actually as divine souls lower our vibration and frequency to be here so with that being said that's all energy too right feelings are all energy it's not to sit in it's to constantly flow accept and allow and move and be in all moments and experience everything we can when we're in the physical when we're not here in the physical anymore we don't have those arms to hug somebody right? We don't have, you know, our senses that we have here. We can't go swimming in the lake. We can't smell the trees. We can't feel the soil of mother earth, right? Experience fully in each moment what we can and clearing out our energy and moving forward at all times and gathering all the treasures and gifts and lessons we can when we're here is right. Part of the energy, be the fullest, best person that you can be. And do that. it with pure love. Yeah, do it with pure love and acceptance. Yeah, the flow, movement. I like that a lot. Um, okay. And I Eric, just, go ahead. sorry, I just wanted to, you know, with us being um, divine souls, like we're empowering, we're inspirational, right? We're love, we're lovable. We are, we have our true essence. We have a voice. We have a vibration to speak our true selves. And you know, we should use that energy, that capability that we can tap into. Definitely. Everybody has that so gift thank you. to give. Yes. Um, okay. So Erica, how about you on this one? Um, what's that thing that you want people to understand in terms of what energy can do for your life? So first I want to say, I just love what Pat and Sunshine have shared. It just like makes me feel all warm and gooey. <laughs> <laughs> so it's just really wonderful. Um, I call myself the thumb on the hand of, of, of the authors in this book because um, I am not strictly an energy healer. I am uh, board certified in holistic nutrition. So what I want to really impress upon people is what I have in my mapping step, my essential mapping step three, which is change your diet and make other lifestyle changes. So um, that's the more practical side as I, you know, I, as I see it. Um, and of course, food is your, is our essential energy, right? It's, it's what, if we don't eat, if we don't drink really, really high quality water, we're not going to have, the, we're not, our bodies will not have the energy that, that we need to, to take advantage of this beautiful life that we have here. So I really just want to urge people to understand that 
food and lifestyle choices are integral components to successful energy management. And what is, you know, food can either be a toxin or a medicine. And I just want to urge everyone to really be mindful and deliberate about the what they choose to put in their bodies and not just, you know, make the time. This is a really simple example. Make the time to cut up celery and carrots and bring them with you so that you don't have to run to fast food and put toxic food in your body that's full of sugar, fat, gluten, and, and, is, and is seriously and literally poisoning you. And if you have it once, okay, maybe it's not poisonous, but over time, a, di a steady diet of, of food that is not nourishing your cells, um, not drinking enough water, it's so basic. We are 80% water. And that is critical. The, the flow of the river within us is what connects to everything that Pat and Sunshine are talking about. So, um, so just choose, choose deliberately. Please choose deliberately the lifestyle choices that you that that um, the the lifestyle um, habits, your habits that you have in your life. Choose those deliberately. Really be mindful. Yeah, it's really important. Um, awesome. Uh, I love listening to all of you talk about this. And also just a big thank you to all three of you, not just for saying yes to this project, but for taking that challenge I gave you to step up with your amazing, authentic stories of who you are and how you got to this place of teaching people about these subjects. But you know, to our listeners, you're also going to enjoy their master teachings. You can hear some of them today in the way that they're answering these questions. And I'm so thankful to all of you for being willing, you know, to do that and do it so brilliantly. So this next one, Sunshine, I'm going to start with you for this. Pat actually talked about this a little bit in one of her answers, but to take full advantage of understanding and mastering energy, we have to practice awareness and being able to feel is how you get to the healing. So helping people feel is a part of this for me. You know, um, what I want to know is what is your practice of awareness look like on the day to day for you? What's mm -hmm. an example of how you're in your awareness practice? how I'm in my awareness uh, practice uh, personally. Um, I think it's for everybody individual, but I really like to just be and be in the moment. Even though I have like a schedule, I have a family, I have all that stuff to do, but what fills me up? What makes me um, the best to start the day, right? For So for example, as soon as I wake up, ever since I was little wee, I was like, oh my goodness, I woke up. It's a gift. Today's a gift because I'm here, right? So showing gratitude for that and showing gratitude too for, you know, my breath, right? Being able to get moving, being able to use all those little details, like even to breathe the air that we breathe. We don't stop and show gratitude for that. So that is an example of how my day would start. Who am I going to get to connect with? What um, what magic is going to happen today, right? <clears throat> what am I going to give and what am I going to be able to receive, right? And who am I going to become? Because I believe that we're always constantly changing, so we're never the same. I'm not the same person that I woke up as I was this morning because I am energy. I'm not the same person as I was before I started coming on with you guys. I'm constantly changing and in flow, and that is what um, I believe I love to be a uh, yoga. I'm very connected to mother earth. I feel that if she didn't have us here on the physical, we wouldn't be able as guests, we wouldn't be able to experience it. So the, the divine and mother earth is like equal to me and uh, works. Um, so walking in the woods, right. Connecting with the water, feeling the support of the trees and the energy of the trees and the wildlife um, is 
you know, daily practices that I love to do. And also our spirit, no, like our, our soul knows a lot of things and we can get into that repetitive kind of thing, even though our soul already knows. Our soul doesn't have time to concept. So conditionally we're in ourselves kind of like, okay, well, I'm not gonna get it to, to it today because I'd like to do an hour of yoga and I only have 15 minutes. Our soul wants to be filled up, right? And has a desire and has passions that it wants to experience. So that's just bull, bullshit, right? It's an excuse not to move forward with it. So our soul doesn't know if we did it a minute, five minutes, right? It doesn't know. It's just an excuse to not move forward and not do it. And just to be into like a routine and, um, so I just practice, you know, being that's so important to me and being in the moment and being surrounded by Mother Earth and my loved ones here and tapping into the divine, right? Meditation, visiting. I'm a medium, so I'm always getting information um, and being the best that I can be, right? And helping. We we're talking about healing earlier, um, Pat, and you were talking a lot about that. And that's something, you know, a lot of people when it comes to healing, they instantly think more of, I don't believe in negative or positive, but it means like something's broken. I'm not good enough. I'm, you know, I need healing. Healing to me is none of that. We're like, we're here to love and heal to evolve our soul. It's that simple. And um, my teachings have always been from spirit and healing means moving forward that expansion, that growth, that being, that experiencing in all things. Healing is that self-awareness, right? Healing is the treasures and gifts through experiences that we get and that we can share with other people and help them heal. And we all illuminate each other. And that light gets bigger and bigger as we do so. And we're never alone. We're always completely guided and supported. If it's our angels, if it's spirit guides, if it's our collective, if it's beloved ones, it may feel invisible, it could have a lot of fear to it, but life is totally different when all our bodies and systems are connected and fulfilled. I love it, Sunshine. Thank you. Um, wow. Yeah, there's a lot. <laughs> all of you have so many different things that you're practicing on a day-to-day -day basis. I think sometimes we are in it, we live it. And so we don't realize um, to others who don't have a practice that's supporting them, right? They they may they may need that kind of that simple entry point. Erica, how about you? What does this look like on your day to day? Give the listeners an idea. So I definitely have an awareness practice, um, a daily awareness practice. And it's, it's something, again, that I talk about in my essential mapping steps. Um, so I wake up, when I wake up, I say the serenity prayer. Um, and I, I immediately just, I connect with the divine, what I call source. And there are a couple of other, um, I'll call them prayers that, that I, that I say. Um, I, and then I make, I make time for myself. I don't do, unless I absolutely have to, I don't do anything on any day before I take care of me because I can give, I can do so much for others. I can give so much more of myself when I do that. So what that looks like is I, um, I do high intensity interval training on a bike that gets me in touch, makes me aware of my body, the wellness of my body. And depending on, on a given day, it might be some of the aches and pains of my body. Um, I also do, I have a Kundalini yoga routine that I do every day. It's usually 40 to 60 minutes, depending on the day. And I work in some body work. So again, it's merging the the um, the spiritual with the physical. And I also do a gratitude list. Sunshine mentioned a gra gratitude. It's so important. If my mind is is in any kind of negative space, 
grat an attitude of gratitude just lifts me right out of it. And that's certainly a really easy thing that I teach, teach my clients and customers and nature. Um, so whenever I have a chance, I get out in nature during the day. Um, I have a dog. So I'm, I'm in a, a huge animal lover. So just as Sunshine mentioned, um, being out with the energy uh, that nature gives us is, is so, it fills us up, right? It fills me up. Um, I'm a tree hugger. So all of this, um, all of this enables me to stay aware of myself on this plane, on this earth plane, but also enables me to connect with the divine so that I'm, I am constantly guided by my intuition and by that connection. Nice. <laughs> my dog is part of my awareness practice too. <laughs> Absolutely. They are so healing. Yes, they Amazing. are. Um, I, I love that connection so much. You're making me mm -hmm. think of my little Leo, the dog. <laughs> Pat, how about you? How would you answer this question um, in terms of your day-to-day? -day? I think um, uh, both Sunshine and Erica have talked about things that are in my life also, and that is the sense of being, understand your sense of being, and um, nature, connecting with nature. And what I've been watching uh, over the last 20 years is how fast everything is moving and how technology is really taking people away from all of that. And when you talk to people that are not in the awareness that we're in, they don't understand what you're talking about when you say being. And they certainly, they think, well, nature, that's for vacation. You know, that I don't have time for nature. So, um, so what I like to surround myself with is images that have nature in them, even on my phone. Like when I turn my phone on, I have a, a path I like to look at, you know, and that's, that's not, I mean, the technology of the phone is offensive to me, but yet it's so valuable to use. And on my computer, the screensaver in my house, I mean, if I can, if I think about it, fresh flowers would be great. And that's an immediate connection. And what I was thinking about the other day as I was writing something else was that feng shui, uh, the origins of it go back thousands of years when most people were working the land. And as a result, when you're working the land, you're immediately connecting with the divine because we take for granted that food is in the supermarket, but when you see it growing out of the ground, that's a whole different awareness level. And, um, or say if you have animals in the barn and you see births and deaths of animals, I mean, that's a connection with the bigger picture. And that's what I, that's why I like feng shui so much is I see it's a big picture thing. So when I, you know, when I'm working and what, it's the same with all of us, as we're in the environment of people of like minds, it feels like we're flying because we don't have to explain things. Everybody understands what we're talking about. But then you go back to uh, talking to somebody that is in your family or you're a coworker or somebody in the street and they just, they don't know what you're talking about. And it's like, oh yeah, it's a reminder that we're always surrounded by people of different levels of awareness. And the challenge is to remain with our own and to not get dragged down into the pit of darkness with um, <laughs> devolution with um, so many people I know. But anyway, the point being that all you can be is an example for them. And my real concern through all of this is watching the younger generations start their toddler lives on the phone on the like with the electronics and how putting the phone down and sitting in the backyard and talking with your relatives and i mean i think that that was something lifelong that i learned based on you know my age but um when i see it with young kids i try to come up with all kinds of um ways to remind them that checking with nature is you're checking in with something much bigger about who you are and I think that's what we've lost in all the evolution of technology is we've really lost a connection of who we really are. And um, so I think nature is the, you know, it's just so amazing to just take a walk in the woods um, or to be with your dog. 
or, you know, cause they're on their own mission. You know, they know you are their mission <laughs> and that feels pretty good. It's unconditional love, right? Cause that's what the divine is unconditional, unconditional love. So that's the, that's the work is to get people back to that. Cause they've lost it so quickly with the way our society is evolving. Yes. Can I just God. jump in with one thing that I think we'll all agree on? Or I want to just remind everyone that G-O-D <laughs> is the opposite of D-O-G, <laughs> right? Absolutely. So they, they are here to connect us, I believe, to, to the divine and to keep us out in nature and to, you know, to live a dog, you know, if we could all live a dog's life, we'd all be, you know, <laughs> a lot healthier, right? I have gone by that for a long, long time. Oh my goodness. Yes. Well, and the cats and the birds and the everything, yes, all, all yes, of the, um, yeah, all of the amazing creatures in the world. All are, creatures. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, reminders. so if I, this is an example to answer your question, Laura, um, if I can't get out in nature, I find myself at the end of the day on Instagram going through all the puppies and the <laughs> videos of horses and babies and puppies. And, and it's like, oh, yeah, the joy, the joy of it all, you know. And that's one definitely thing, what it comes back to is the energy of joy. Um, I one think with, thing. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Erica. Let's no, wrap no, it up, ahead. ladies. No, what finish. do you have? One last thing. <laughs> I was just going to say one thing I teach, I teach my clients is if you can't get outside, look outside, spend mm. time, spend time looking at specific objects in nature, a tree, a bush, whatever you can get your eyes on and try to try to merge with that, you know, really absorb what you're looking at, because even that can refresh you. Yes. If you can't get outside, look outside. Pat, last words real quick to our listeners. What's your one statement? Your environment that you spend the most time in is the envir environment that affects you the most. Yes, that's important. Sunshine, how about you? Oh, unmute girl. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That you are loved, right? And you're strong and you're capable and you're a gift to this world. Yes. Perfect. 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 Um, you guys, listeners, I know that you heard things today that gave you the goosebumps or that you're resonating with, or maybe that you're curious about, or you just want to continue the conversation. So please scroll down to the show notes because I have all of these author, expert, amazing teachers um, hooked up with their websites. Take a little exploration. They're very generously there for you to take the next steps and to give you the support that you're looking for. Our books are way more than books. They are the community. Um, they are waiting for you to reach out. And that's a huge mission of mine with every single book that we create with a collection of amazing people. So um, please do that. Take an, a, a little scroll down and check out all of the amazing things that the authors are up to in the world. Um, authors, thank you so much for what you do in the world and for being here today to share it with everyone. Thanks, ladies. Thanks, Laura. Thank you for having us. Thank you so much, for Laura, for yeah. having us. So listeners, last note to you is you're invited to our live stream book launch party. That's going to be November 18th at 10 a.m. Eastern on the Brave Healer Productions Facebook page. I'm going to have all of the energy medicine solution authors with me that day to celebrate. And if you happen to be listening to this interview around that date, that means you should hop over to Amazon because the book is ready and you can purchase and start your journey today. And lastly, everyone, remember, your words change the world when you're brave enough to share them. It is time to be brave. See you next time, everyone.